So then uh, this uh, allows us to move to the uh, next part of set of uh, methods in optimization. We have looked at first, these are all first order methods because we are only computing gradient at best, right? So that the other big elephant in the optimization room is second order methods. So Newton and quasi-Newton methods. So that's what we're going to look at next. So those of you reading the book, this is roughly chapters uh, 3, 6, and 7 of Nossadil and Wright. Okay. We've already discussed the Newton direction at when we started with uh, line search methods, right? So everyone kind of knows the motivation. So what was the motivation to go towards Newton, towards Newton methods? rate of convergence was quadratic, right? Not linear, rate of convergence was quadratic. Okay. And there's no free lunch. What is the price? Compute Hessians. Why is it expensive to compute a Hessian? Because I have to find the gradient of gradient in some sense, right? So if I take, for example, let's take function x and y, okay? So if I do grad f, what all is there in grad f? What is the expression for grad f? df by dx, df by dy. Let us say I was uh, evaluating this by finite differences, okay? Finite difference is simply f of x plus h, y minus f of x, y by h. So how many function evaluations did I need over here to calculate grad f? Two? At least three, no? Because there's f of x plus h, there is f of x plus h comma y, x comma y plus h, and f of x comma y. So I need at least three function evals. If I'm doing, this is what is called a one-sided difference. There is also a two-sided difference or a central difference. How do I write a central difference? This is one-sided. Two-sided is f of x plus h comma y minus f of x minus h comma y divided by 2h. Here, how many function evaluations would I need? Four function evaluations to get the gradient because there is no common point now, right? It's x plus h, x minus h, y plus h, y minus h. What is the advantage of a two-sided? It's much more accurate, right? Numerically, you can prove this is, actually, uh, if you take the Taylor series expansion of f of x plus h, what is the order of the error? So f of x, let's do this. So error, if I write f of x plus h, the Taylor series of this, this is going to be f of x comma y plus what? What is the first term? h times df by dx x comma y plus order of h square terms, right? So when I take this guy to the left hand side, my uh, error is order x square. On the other hand, if I take this guy and you write the Taylor series expansion for f of x plus h and f of x minus h, what will happen to the quadratic terms? They cancel out exactly because h square, h square has the same uh, sign and subtract him, the two you get. So what will be the order of error? h cube. This has order h cube error. Simple Taylor series or Taylor expansion. 
So that's why the two-sided difference is much more accurate because the error, error is now going as order h cube. Always a price to be paid. The price is I need four function evaluations instead of three function evaluations. Okay. So this was just to calculate grad f. Now what is Hessian of f? f x x f uh, x y f y x f y y. Right. So what is fxx? What do I mean by fxx? d2f by dx2. Right. And this is going to be d2f by dx dy. Right. So each of these, so how, I mean this I can write as this, right, d by dx, df by dy. So I need s many more function evaluations than just three for each of these terms, right? Because I'm going to get, this is going to be a finite difference in y. And together, this whole thing is going to be a fd in x. This is all just to get one guy. And similarly, I have to repeat it for fxx, fyy, right? So you can, it's easy enough to calculate how many function evaluations you will need over here. So that is the price that you're paying. And this is a simple toy illustration of 2D. Real life problems will have, let's say, a few 10,000 or a few lakh or a million value, I mean, dimensions of uh, F. Good luck, right? So, <laughs> you don't find the use of uh, Newton methods in much in uh, the machine learning of data science, big data applications for this reason. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's uh, uh, just do a bit of revision of this, what are the requirements of using or doing a Newton search method, okay? Is the Newton method a line search method? It is a line search method, right? So it is a line search method, which is great because we've already studied one type of line search method, which was gradient descent. Right. So this is going to be simply x k plus one. This is how I update x k plus alpha k p k. Okay. We already have a recipe for calculating alpha, which is inexact line search. Right. So alpha k can come from inexact line search. Okay. What was the Newton direction equal to? Does anyone recall? There was a negative Hessian inverse multiplied by grad f. Okay. So this is uh, the Newton direction. And just to contrast it, this is my st uh, steepest descent was minus identity times. But this was not all, right? It was not, it's not enough to just write this over here. There was one further requirement on the Hessian. The Hessian needed to be positive definite, right? So Hessian okay. uh, So do, do you do you recall why that is or how can we derive that this is necessary? How will we do it? We needed to show that it leads to a, a legitimate descent direction. For that, what was the uh, expression? I needed to look, look at the cosine of the angle between these guys, right? So between minus grad fk and my pk this angle theta k, right? So cosine theta between these two vectors would simply be minus grad f k uh, transpose p k norm grad f k norm p k. Okay. No problem with the denominator because that's always positive. Uh, over here, if I substitute the numerator, p k is coming from here, the Newton expression, this became uh, or grad f k transpose right. 
and this needed to be cosine of this needed to be what greater than zero less than zero greater than zero right so this has to be like this right so therefore this expression has to be positive so you can see therefore that if uh, if inverse hessian is positive definite right then pkn is a legitimate descent direction okay this is a stronger requirement why is it a slightly stronger requirement but a very practical requirement because when i say positive definite what am i saying if the matrix a is positive definite i'm saying that z transpose az is greater than 0 for all z for all z here what do i need i am always only going to multiply it by grad f transpose right so it, it's a little bit of a uh, uh, weaker thing that i require for making sure the newton direction is a legitimate descent direction but in practice there's no way for me to know what set of values this grad f is going to take so since there is no way for me to practically ensure that i will just say let it be uh, a positive definite matrix the consequence of this is that in practice when you implement a uh, newton method it may happen that your matrix is not positive definite but this product is positive so you can you can you can see what has happened over there there are some vectors for which this uh, product is positive you just got lucky and ideally when we are solving research problems we do not want to rely on luck any more than necessary right so uh, that's why this is uh, standard uh, requirement okay now uh, you will find that in many places it is not written that the inverse of the hessian is positive definite it in, instead it is written that the hessian is positive definite are these two the same things because what is the simple linear algebra concept that tells us that it's the same thing the eigen value decomposition right so if i write this as uh, q lambda q transpose right these are orthogonal vectors q and what is going to be this inverse is going to be the same q is going to come here this is going to get inverted q transpose these are positive greater than zero diagonal values these are also therefore greater than zero diagonal values right so uh, again linear algebra over here okay so um i've mentioned newton and newton like methods okay so now we'll just i'll just introduce a little bit more of terminology so what you will find in most of the literature is that this pk is written in the following way instead of writing the hessian explicitly it is written as that the the term given for it is bk and if this bk is equal to the hessian we say of course this is a newton method if bk is an approximation of the hessian is called a newton like method okay or the more precise word would be quasi newton okay so you will find the same word the same term bk being used throughout the discussion that will follow in the subsequent lectures which means that i can switch between newton and quasi newton depending on how i compute my um bk okay and the whole point of a quasi newton method is that i want to approximate the hessian means i don't want to calculate it because we have seen what is the cost involved i want to approximate this hessian and this uh, quasi newton method gives us again there are several cousins of quasi newton methods different tricks to estimate the hessian not calculate the hessian but estimate the hessian so this gives rise to like we had a family of non linear cg methods we have a family of quasi newton methods okay which since they don't directly require calculating the hessian they are very very competitive with uh, your precondition cg non linear cg all of that okay 
So that's that's about it, I think, that we want to talk about. In terms of introducing, it's more like a revision of what you already knew for the, the requirements for CG and, uh, sorry, for the Newton methods and the quasi-Newton methods, okay. Um, we'll have to ensure that this approximation is also uh, positive definite. Otherwise, it will not be a descent direction, okay. So in next week, we will look at uh, further analysis of the Newton method, okay. Uh, for a lot of engineering problems which are not high in dimension, Newton methods are very, very competitive because much faster rate of conversion.